It's the exact same problem as you, you did yesterday on your own. So what you're going to do now with your group members, I want you to discuss your answers and what you're doing is creating the best answer to the problem that you can. So as thorough as possible, as organized as possible, and as accurate as possible. So not everybody solved the problem the same and that's 100% fine. But maybe you want to take bits and pieces from each other or maybe you realize, oh, this is the part where I was struggling but now I get it. So I want to hear discussion among the groups and then come up with the best answer that you can as a group collectively and put it on this new piece of paper, okay? So take about 10 minutes to do that. Just the Anything you do, anything that's going to make this be the best answer, do. So like for example, if somebody picks this paper up and they look at it, they can understand what's going on and uh, what numbers represent and things like that. That's total, that's up to your group. Those are your options. Do you think, do you think that that would make the best answer, including the graph? If you want to do that, if you feel like the graph will make the best answer or add to the best answer, then you can include it. And if, if you guys think that either one of your graph is, is good, you guys all agree on that graph, you can use that so you don't have to reproduce it. We'll just attach it. But just make sure, do you have everything labeled? Does the graph make sense to somebody who, is not, who doesn't know what's going on, who doesn't know the situation? So make sure lines are labeled, points are labeled, axes are labeled. Okay. But first off, discuss your answers. Did you guys get the same thing? What were the approaches you took? We did. He went over it. I, I uh, actually I added wrong, but I fixed it and went through again. And I, uh, I, got, I got their answer. So. Okay. How did you solve it? Um, well, I mean, where should I, I mean, I don't really know where to start. Uh, I mean, I just, uh, okay. So what I did wrong, though, is I, uh, I added wrong here. And I actually got negative 4 by accident. I had 24 plus negative 20. I actually got negative 4. So okay. I, but I went through the problem with negative 4 by accident. And I got, like, uh, I think I got, like, 18. But I, it's, the answer's not 18, it's 6. Okay. So, so what, what process, though? What was different about the way you approached the problem than what they did? I didn't graph at all. I just went through with the... Uh, the, uh, the, the line equation that we did. Okay, so you used elimination then? Yep. Okay, and then they used, you guys used the graphs, correct? How did you get your 6-4? Did you simply look at the graph or did you guys use, did you solve the system algebraically or what did you do? I, I organized my stuff up here and got that graph all the way through. Okay. Did you double check that point with your constraints? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I looked mine at the graph and then I did it with the constraints. Okay. All right. So the combination of the two help us come up with the best thing. What, what do you think is the most exact or accurate answer? Simply a graph or algebraically? I don't know how to say, but it's like the most correct. Okay. Precise. Okay. Um, how can the graph be used to help, do you think? Yeah, I've got to see that this point is on, the, on where they, is right where they intersect. So. Okay, good. And then you have this as your shaded region? Right. Because, let me ask this, could you have part, is any point in the shaded region possible? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because it's feasible, but the maximum is six four. Okay. That's what I went for. I went and did the line stuff uh -huh. like that. We did that one day. I did it on here. Okay. Good. Could you make part of a boomerang? Yeah. Could you what? Make part of a boomerang, whether it's the small or the large. No. no. So is every point in that feasible region actually possible? Or do we have, okay, so what is what do the points have to be? Every whole number. Good. In this case, it would be every whole number because we are in quadrant one. Right. Okay, good. So whatever you need to combine to make your best um, answer, and like I said, if you want to attach one of your graphs, you can. Did you guys all solve it the same? It would be X and Y. I keep doing that. Oh my gosh. It messes me up. Um, we did it somewhat the same, somewhat different. Tell me how you did the same. I 
Well, we got similar answers. That's pretty much it so far. Okay. Two dollars. Yeah. So. Okay. And she got the true maximum. I was close to it, but not. <laughs> Why do you agree with hers instead of your own? Because six four would not be the maximum. Five five would be the like one graph. Do you have the graph? No, I didn't graph. Okay, so. Flip your paper back over. So let me see. And Sophie, do you agree with the 5-5 five five instead of the 6-4? And did we check that in with the constraints? Not We're figuring out the constraints now. Okay. We're trying to see if the answer goes with the constraints. Okay, good. Perfect. Perfect. Good, I like how you've organized that. You've taken the time into consideration. Good, good. Perfect. So did you guys all solve it using systems? Did my, yeah. What'd you do? I didn't get, like, I don't know, I got confused with the information. Okay. Because I was confused with the 8 and 10, so Yeah, she I thought was that was a constraint. There. Yeah. Okay, okay. So and what was it actually? It was it helping was us figure? The, yeah. Yes. So we're trying to figure out the what? The maximum? Profit. Profit. Okay, good. Did anybody graph it? Could this be represented graphically? Yeah. Yes. How? By graphing the constraints and then figuring out the um, shaded region and then finding the points Point. and then plug in yeah. the objective function to see what the highest profit could be. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. I know what I did was wrong, but I can't figure out like what I graphed wrong yes. to uh, end up with the point ten zero to be more than six four. <laughs> Is 10 0 in your feasible region? And this is the feasible region right here. Right right here so. Well, if you plug, what, where's your um, profit function? This is my objective function. So you're saying, what's x represent? Small? No, y is small. Y is small. Okay. So. Are you sure that you've graphed them correctly then? Uh, I graphed them wrong in the first place and then I redid it. Because I got all the same points that everybody else did. Are you sure that what you have here matches up with what you have here? Like here you're saying y is small, but is y still small here or is y the large? I think that's where. Because yeah, what what did what did the two represent in the yeah, problem? Two represented the uh, the two hours it takes. For how for what? For uh, variable x for large for to make one large. Are you sure? Yeah. Three. It takes three hours. Like three hours. Oh. Geez. So that's where you got mixed up. What is X and Y. So what did you guys what did you guys do? I used elimination. Yeah, same here. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think about using elimination. Okay. So, so we didn't have to grab. And it's you can come out with our points. Okay. So you said you said you didn't think of using elimination, you only thought of graphing. But are they both going for the same answer? They're both gonna represent the same answer? I think elimination was fastest and easiest here though. <laughs> I and I'm I probably agree with that, but is one more accurate? than the other, do you think? That one's well, like that checking one's over and over and over. Yeah, this will give them the correct points. And that you have Dude, to guess. They have to guesstimate for points. Good. There's more, there's more um, possibly more room for mistakes. But it's a good visual to have. It's a good representation of what it means to be a solution to a system. It's that exact point that both constraints have in common. OK, good. Have you guys come up with your best answer as a group yet? Have you written it down? You want me to write it down? Yes, sir. Wait, is that one? How are we doing back here? That one's one that one's dark, but this is what we have so far. OK. 8x plus 10x. You have p of xy. So what should be in your equation here? 8x plus 10y. There you go. Oh. <laughs> These are telling you what your variables are going to be in your equation. Okay. So now, 
Oh, oh, Lauren Knight helped me with that. So. Okay. So you've you've organized your information in a table here. You've got the 24. What about the 10? Where's the 10 going to fit into this? Yes, the 10 boom rates to decorate of either. I figured there had to be a third variable. There's the way you were looking at my paper earlier. No, no, no. There doesn't have to be a third variable. But what are you decorating? The boomerangs. What kind of boomerangs are there? Small and large. For a total of what? What do you mean? What would be the total number of boomerangs you could decorate? Yeah, like Ten yeah. of either size. So how can you represent? Okay, I have equals. Good. Do you want equals though? Less than or equal to. Mm -hmm. Why is it less than or equal to instead of equals ten? Because it can't be greater. Good. You can decorate ten, but nothing before. Good. Keep going. So what is your final answer? How many of each should they make and how much money will they make? I said six small and four large for a maximum profit of $80. Okay. Is that what you guys got? We didn't know we had to do the graph or solve Okay. Okay. So you, um, did you guys graph it as well? Did you get the six and the four from the graph? Did you check that with your constraints? Or did you just look at it and say, hey, I plugged it in. It, it makes, it gives me the biggest number, so that's the maximum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't plug it. OK. But did you take this number and look at your constraints and make sure that it made the constraints true as well? Well, Just to verify true. that it is a solution. That one's true. That one's true. That one's true. Okay. Did anybody solve it algebraically? Like using elimination or anything? Okay. Okay. Good. Can you use elimination? Can you? Yeah. Why? Isn't this the same thing? Why is it the same thing? What is it representing? Her? It's representing her? <laughs> well, what, what about you answer, though? What does that point represent? That point represents the maximum profit. Okay, yes, it represents the combination for the, to get the maximum profit, given all of our constraints. In general, though, that point is representing what? Those two lines. What about those two lines? Where they intersect. Where they intersect. So the point they have in common. So when we graph, that's a solution to the system. But also, elimination is just another way to find a solution to a system. Okay. So if you graph it and figure out, hey, this is where they cross, and you use elimination, elimination is still showing you what? Where, they where, the, where the two lines intersect. It's still representing that point. So if you have three constraints, that kind of You would do like the three, like how we did that? Well, how many lines are intersecting at that one point? Three. Because you have this one and this one, right? Well, like you do like that one and then you do these two other. You could to find those actual points. You mean to plug it into the objective function, the vertices? You could. You could find the, um, the solution to this line and this line, which we already know because when x is 0, y is this. Um, do the same thing for this line and this line. But you know that that's the maximum because you plugged it into your objective function. So yes, you could use elimination for those two lines and you get the same thing. Anybody graph here? Didn't graph? What did you guys use? Elimination. Okay. Did you guys all set up the same? Yeah. You organize more of a table? Yeah, I use more of a table type thing to keep everything organized. Good. But you kept all of your hours for a total of 24? Yeah. Good. I like that. 
then I set up the, my equations. It took me a while to get them right, because, yeah, but. Okay. Corey, did you use equations? Okay. Whoa, I see inequalities over there, though. Why did you use inequalities? Why did you use inequalities? Is this? Uh, is this a, because those those are inequalities, but here these guys both use equal signs. So what made you want to use inequalities? That's what I was just used to. Like making lines and stuff. Okay. Which do you guys think is more appropriate? And equation or an inequality? You could use an inequality because it can be less than 24 hours. It can be? Less than 10. So what's going to be the most appropriate? Probably an inequality. An inequality. So works. don't change your answer so quick. Don't, just it because somebody doesn't, way. it does, you're right. To get the maximum, it's going to be the same yeah. thing. But to represent the situation, an inequality is going to be the most appropriate because you're right, you don't have to use all 24 hours. You don't have to decorate all 10 boomerangs. But you have to get the most. But you have to get the most. So in order to get the most, you have to make six. Exactly. And then four. Good. Awesome. Be more confident. <laughs> Did you guys all graph? Yeah. Well, then we solved it algebraically just because. Just to verify? Yeah. Did you get the same thing? Yeah, eventually. Yeah. So what do you mean tweaking? Tweaking of the graph, tweaking of the equations, when, inequalities? When we looked for it first where it was crossing, we thought it was closer to like in the middle. Okay. Part, and it really wasn't. There was six more, not yeah. five, four. So what's the most accurate approach then, do you think? Uh, definitely solving algebra. Okay, because a lot of things can go on with the actual, yeah. the actual graphs. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, have we all had a chance to come up with our best answer? Yes. As a group. Yes. Okay, keep working. You're fine. Keep working. So what I'm going to do now, you're keeping all this stuff together because I will be collecting it, okay? What you're going to do now, you or each group is going to get sample responses. So these are basically students who have answered this exact same question that you have. And this is their work as far as answering the question that you guys answered last night on your own and then again today as a group, okay? So there's a total of four of them. So four different student responses. There are questions on here that they want you to answer as you analyze the work, but really this is your opportunity to be a teacher as well as far as the grading goes. However, don't be mean. Um, use constructive criticism, don't write for example, one class wrote, what piece of information has Danny forgotten to use? Somebody said his brains. So that's not acceptable. I don't want that. I want um, something that you would see, you would not see that on a paper that you get back, okay? So constructive criticism, not, not um, sarcasm. You can mark on the paper. Don't write things even if you do think Danny forgot his brains. Don't write that. But some things to keep in mind as you're critiquing the work. Do you have questions to ask the student? Are you unclear of where information came from? Do you not understand their thought process? Um, and I'll put, I'll put things that you can consider up on my overhead here in a minute. Actually, let me go ahead and do that now so you can look at those while I'm passing these out. So in addition to answering the questions that are actually on each page, these are things for you to keep in mind as you go. So these will help you answer those questions on that page as a group. And I want each, I want the group to discuss each student response. So things to keep in mind. What do you like about the work? Is it organized? Is it clear? Um, how has the student organized the work? Have they or haven't they? What mistakes have been made? Where do you think they went wrong if they did? What questions would you want to ask the students? So, and that's similar to how I come around and ask you guys. If I just see a number, I'll say something like, well, what does that number represent? Well, why did you do that? Where did that come from? So, kind of, what, do you have any questions about their thought process or where they came up with an answer? And then, could they improve their work? So, maybe they got it right, but maybe you feel like there could have been additional information. So, similar to what you guys did, possibly in your groups, maybe you guys got it right, 
for example, maybe Nolan and Ashton got the same answer, but they didn't do it correctly. Could they combine their work to make the best answer the most complete an answer, which is kind of what you guys just did with your group work. So each, each uh, sample question, I want the group to discuss and answer the questions together. So make sure everybody has a chance to actually see what's going on. Each person gets their input, has a say in what's going on, and then fill it out. So you guys have about 20 minutes. If you need that much time, if we finish up before that, I will um, move on to the next part. If not, we'll take pretty much the rest of the class period to, for you guys to work on this. And be thorough with it. And it may trigger some of you guys to think, oh, I could have done it that way, or oh, that was the part that I was struggling with. Or oh, this student struggled with this too. I'm not the only one. So just when you guys get that, you can move on to this. Yes, you're allowed to write on it. Any marks you want to make, you can make on here. I'm just listening. You guys agree? That, that's what Alex said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We have sort of a, a situation here. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's my, the situation? The answer I came up with, the answer he came up with, and the answer we all came up with as a group is in the package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh? Did you guys end up graphing the one that you came up with? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys all you all ended up agreeing on the five five. No, we end up agreeing on four small and five large. Four small and five large. Where? Let, okay, let's go back to how did you get that? Graphing, algebraically, both. Uh, Tell me the thought process. Well, we graphed it, and then we found like the maximum, which was 100, and we plugged it in. And you can't make 100 boomerangs. Or, can't make 100 boomerangs. So we plugged it back in to equal 100, and we got 25 and 20. And if you get them down to the lowest terms with an equal factor, it's 4 and 5. I don't know if it's right. That's just okay. what found through it. Okay, so which line is this? What line is this representing? Um, that's the H. Yeah. That's the uh, the two x and the three plus the y. It's twenty four. Mm -hmm. So your y intercept is what? Uh, eight. Eight, and your x intercept is. So let's make sure we've graphed that correctly. Three, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It goes up there. It goes like two, that. Four, six, eight, ten. That well, one goes like that. It kind of curves a little bit, but it went Does like that, that make sense for it not to do that? Curve? For it to be a. Well, I, yeah, could, I didn't draw it straight. Why it didn't you draw it straight? Because we were just trying to sketch it really quick. But shouldn't it be straight? Yeah. Why should it be straight? 
so you don't mess up. <laughs> okay, but why else? What about what about this tells me that's a straight line? What do we have there? Why is it linear? <laughs> and the <laughs> it's the right letter to start with. What do you? Still the right letter, but not the right answer I'm looking for. How could you rewrite this so it's more possibly familiar? No, it's in. It's there. You go. So there's a there's what there. Oh. Yeah. You could rearrange this so you would have the what. And, and the slope, and we know linear functions always have a what? A slope. It has that constant rate of change. So these should all be linear functions. There shouldn't be any jagged marks. So this is the one that we have jagged. No, it, this one goes like that, and then that one goes like that. Like, like that's. Well, this one goes from there to there. Right, I get that. This one bends in the middle. Yeah. Why is it bending though? That's what I'm asking. Like, why is there a bend? Wrong. Yeah. Are the, all are the x and y intercepts in the wrong place? No, I just didn't draw it straight. Okay. Yeah. Well, it might help if I actually draw it straight too. <laughs> Did anybody try to solve that same problem algebraically? Yeah. Usually, I tried, but. What method did you use? I used um, elimination. Elimination? Okay. And you got five and four? Yeah. Or four and five? But did anybody check your work and your group? Yeah. Negative two, negative two, negative twenty. Y equals four. Okay, so here's one thing I see. You s you have the right answer. You have four, four y, okay. and you have six for x, and then your I answer is we four or five. Yeah. I erased it when we were. And okay, and the, when you erased it, also look, this is in which spot? The x or the y? X. The x, and you said that was supposed to be the y. Right. And that's supposed to be the x. Right. Why did you erase it? Because we were conferencing and I didn't have faith in my answer. And you said, hey, I just worked this all out. And that work means nothing. And you guys are right. Yep. Be, com be more confident. And, like, and, and, and if you think they're justifying their work, you justify yours. Say, well, this is what I did. And then go from there. OK? So when you redid this, when you made the line straight, did that affect the point of intersection? Yeah. There wasn't that big bend. Okay. And is it close to his answer? The 6 4? Uh, I guess so. I didn't check yet. Uh, yeah. It's closer to that. And if you use rulers and things, you're, you're going to have a more accurate. Yeah. A lot more accurate. So that's that's crucial. Why do you think like Daddy misunderstood and thought that only eight could be made instead of ten? Okay, why do you think only why do you think he thought only eight could be made? What about his what about his work makes you think that only eight could be made? That's because it started with zero and eight. Okay. Did the rest of the combinations? They all made up Yeah, get what he was doing. So you could say this is unclear. Yeah. You're not you have a lot of questions for this student. Okay. So you're on the right track. He he didn't he didn't think of that constraint, right? Because you're saying, hey, there could be ten made. But he, is he accounting for ten being made? The combinations for ten being made? No. What do you think? Why do you think he said, okay, these are the ones I want to try, and that's going to be my answer? Why do you think that? 
Is there a pattern in anything? It keeps going down by that many going. So if you start at 8 and it just keeps going down, and this one just starts at 0 and keeps going up. Okay. As far as the profit goes, is there a pattern in anything as to why he said, hey, it's $82? Because once it gets to 82, it goes down. Oh. Right. So what did he lose sight of in this whole thing? Um, when you're would it be how many the amount of minwings can be made? Mm -hmm. He lost sight of that constraint. He lost sight of the hey, I've got ten that I could make. So he lost sight of that. So just that no, you don't have to erase what you have. You're fine. You can just add that on there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The pro twenty four what? Twenty four hours. So the profit is greater than twenty four hours. What does that mean? What are you What are you trying to say about that twenty four hours? Restraints and it's less, or it's greater than 24, which is. So are those are those even in the feasible region? Are they even possible? No. Is it even possible like five and five? No. Why not? So it's not in the feasible region. It's not in the feasible region because you said you just plugged it in, and is it going to be more than 24 hours? Yes. Yes. And if you look at the graph you guys did, does five five fall in your feasible region, or is that out of your feasible region? Out. So it's not even a possibility. So maybe, does it look like a possibility in, in that graph, though? Yeah, so the graph is wrong. Yeah, the graph is, is inaccurate. Good. Okay. Good. Thought process. Okay. What question do you want to ask the student? What was your thought process? But I still understand how he. Why did he start with zero eight and then count? Asking. That's another question. Why start with zero eight? Do we have to answer this question if we don't understand it? Because I can see like zero eight that makes twenty four, but then this one only makes twenty one, and he uses miscellaneous what? numbers. You said. Where? Why do you think those numbers were going through his head to use though? Why zero and eight, and why six and three? Why? And you can look at that for any of the combination of numbers. Less than. Less than what? Less than 10. Okay, that's one thing. Less than 10 hours. Or less than 10 boomerangs. Less than 10 boomerangs. And also, if you notice, at 0, 08, what's the profit? 80. Okay. What's the profit at 4, 5? What's the profit at 5, 4? 6, 3. So what is he seeing is happening to the prophet? Yes. So he thinks, hey, at 6, 3, what's happening? It's pretty high, but it's going down. It's going back down. I started at 80. I was able to go up to 82, and then I started to go down again. He's only looking for highest numbers. And, yes. So is he, is he considering all possible combinations? He's just looking for the highest amount without trying to Yes, without allowing it to actually be 10. Good. I N A C C U R A T. He thinks I spelled it wrong. He thinks you spelled it inaccurately? Yes. On this, why is it because, I mean, would it be because it's less than 10? Like, what do you guys think? That was confusing. Okay, so in a nutshell, Danny has confused us. Yes. Okay. So, Alexis, what do you think? What's your idea with this one? 
Okay. He went, he started with zero and eight, one and seven, two and six, three and five, four and five, five and four, six and three. And then he came up with all the profit. What, is there anything he hasn't taken into consideration that or? equal to 10. What's equal, equal to 10? What can? The amount of small and large added together can be equal to 10. Good. Has he shown anything where together those can be 10? No. No, all he hasn't these, taken that. All of these out of the eight, those out of the nine. Good. So he never quite got to the combinations of 10. That's one thing. Um, why else do you think, he started zero weight and now look at the profit. No, what's happening with the profit? You start where and end where? You start high. At 80 and then zero. It goes down and then it goes back up and then it goes back down. Okay, good. So we start at 80, we go down, 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 Oop, up, and then what starts happening again? Down again. So he assumes, hey, because I'm starting to go down again. It would, it would come back up. And, and he didn't do what? He didn't go to 10, so he hasn't even considered all possible options. So really, it's a place. <laughs> exactly. He didn't consider his constraints. I mean, if this was like a market, can you wait seven more minutes, please? Thank you. How, how does he come up with um, we're, we're using ethics here <laughs> now. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a school. Day. How, how does he come up with more um, with more dollars than we get? When we, yeah. Because well, we're when I when you graph it, doesn't like there's the point zero twelve is it? Oh, so it's not even what? Feasible, but what, what does it mean to be feasible? It has to fit the. Um, like it has to fit what they get. The so it's not even. It's not even. Not only is it not only feasible, but what's another word for feasible? It's not possible. But we were looking at it. And he made, he, if, it's two hours to make a small one. Okay. And if he makes twelve, it's twenty-four hours. Okay. And the maximum we can do is twenty. Yeah. It was twenty-four. So. So what's not what? So you're what constraint are you guys focused on? Time. What constraint have you forgotten and has Phil forgotten? Oh. Kath can only make 10 boomerangs. Oh, there we go. There you go. There you go. Good. Woo. <laughs> I like the enthusiasm. Don't, don't get too wild on me. <laughs> Um, yeah. For the piece of information, Danny, yeah, you, would it be like you can't have like zero of something? Because that was one of the constraints that we had, is that it's got to be greater than or equal to zero. So could it be zero then, since you just said that? Could be. Could be. Since it's greater than or equal to Good. What, if you notice the combination of small and large that he's created in his table, has he fit one of your constraints that you have over there? I don't think he did that one. Okay, why don't you think he did that one? Because this one's just based off of the profit in numbers. Okay. Boomerangs you can make, not the amount of time. Good. So did he consider all possible combinations of boomerangs that could be made? No. He just looked at, hey, if I'm under 10, what's going to give me my answer? So that's one thing. How would I write that down? Well, he never, he never considered the combinations that would what? That would be greater than 10. <laughs> what's the total number of decorations, or um, what's the total number of boomerangs Kathy can decorate? 10. So he didn't consider, if I'm actually going to decorate 10, he only considered if he was at decorating what? Or, yes. So it could be equal to as well, but he was just looking at... Right here, it's right there. Like my actual eye, like all the way up in the end, and it's twitching. And 
Like, I, I will not have more of my gloves and my headache, and all of a sudden I just feel it, like, put you in there, I'll do it over and over again. Well, don't do that. Oh, that's that's not going to solve anything. Are you finished? Let me take a look. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what else was what else was Alex assuming here? So he said, okay, 12 small or 8 in 24 hours. Is it possible to make 12 small? No. Why not? You can only decorate 10. You can only decorate 10. So that's something he has, has he even taken that into consideration then? So he assumes that he can make 12, like really easy. Because he can only make the 10 that you said. So that's a constraint he didn't consider. He was only looking at time. That's all he cared about. Is that Miss? Where are we? Right here. We work backwards. Yep. Okay. <laughs> what does someone who says Alex mean? They should have more than 10 moon rings. Okay. We're finished. Let me see it. It's comforting. We said good work to some of them. <laughs> good. Because mm -hmm. we're teachers. Do what? No, I used to play piano a little bit when I was a kid. I like to sing, but I'm just not good at it. Okay. So you're right in that he he assumes his maximum is eighty dollars based off of what? What is he? What has he forgotten to take into account here? He multiplied those two. That's how you would get eighty. That's one way. You're right. Um, he went over the... He didn't take in the time. He took time. Oh, he did? Okay, never mind. But you're on the right track. He didn't, like, show any work or anything. He didn't. It's definitely hard to tell. What's one of your constraints that you guys came up with? Um, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 24. Did he fit that one? No. I mean, he said the 24 hours thing, but... So, would that fit... Do 12 and 8 fit the 2x and 3y? How much time does it make us... How much time does it make a... How much time does it take to make a small boomerang? Um, for two hours. So, 2 times 12. Does that fit? 24. How much time does it take to make a large? Does that fit? You made them equal to each other. He said it equal to that. Like only one. Yeah, he said it equal to it. Okay. What's your other constraint? Um, X plus Y is less than or equal to 10. So the combination of the two that has to be what? It has to be 10. 10 or? Less. Less. Is that 10 or less? No. So what constraint did he not consider? The second one. The second one, which deals with the number that Kathy could decorate. Okay, we're about finished here. So what I need, can you guys be trusted to hang on to this stuff for tomorrow? Actually, what I, uh, no. Yes, we can. No, you can't. Yes, Just kidding. But here's what, here's what can happen, because somebody might be absent or something. So I need all of the work, okay? So just organize at each table, put the group part together, and put the individual, the individual pre-assessment is a pile, the group work is a pile, and then the, uh, the discussion problems are a pile. There's three separate piles. Awesome. Good job today, thank you. No, it's, it's too late for that. Okay, so you guys got your, your task back from yesterday. Again, just take a few minutes to look over it, see if you agree with your work. Should you make any changes? Um, are you satisfied? Is your work easy to understand? Or can you add things in to maybe make it more organized or something like that? So just take a few minutes and then I will uh, tell you what we're gonna do with our groups after that. I'm gonna take this time to do that. I did it wrong, but I know what I did. What do you think 
he did. I don't know what they got. Did this wrong. That should have been 12 and that should have been 8. For a while and a half. And I grabbed it. Wrong. Oh, okay. Was your solution working your constraints? Check that. Does your solution match your constraints? So take that into consideration. Where did you get the numbers? The graph looks good. It does. Looks really it good. looks real good. <laughs> but where did you get your numbers to get? I'm that? Something. Well, see if you can go back and try Actually, to figure. I don't know. Is that wrong? I'm not saying if it's right or if it's wrong. I'm just I trying to figure out. I've done some stupid like multiply them together to get some answer that. Um, I'm just trying to figure out your thought process because I'm trying to. What are you trying to show with that constraint? What does S represent? What does L represent? Okay, and you're saying together they should be what? What does that inequality represent? Okay, so you're saying together, it's going to be what to 10? What should it be? Okay. Does greater than or equal to represent that she only has time to decorate 10? Right, why should it be less than or equal to? Because she can only do 10. Right, because she do more than 10? No, no she does 10. Or, obviously, anything under. Okay, so what I want you guys to do now, put your answer kind of aside, leave it out because I want you to, to be able to reference it, but I'm going to be passing out another blank sheet. It's the exact same problem that you guys worked on individually. So what you're going to do now 
you have the opportunity to discuss your actual answer with your group members. So first, what was the thought process? How did you guys solve it? Because some, some people in the groups did not solve it the same way. Do you guys agree on the answer you've come up with? Do you guys agree on the constraints or the limitations for the given problem? And does your answer meet those constraints? Um, does your answer make sense? So what you are going to do using each group member, you are going to create the best possible answer. So the most thorough answer, the most organized answer, and the most accurate answer. And you're going to put it on this paper. So when you get this paper, put all of your group member names on it. And then you are producing the best solution from your three, or four in that case. OK? Are there any questions? So once you um, get this, you may go ahead and start with your group. Go ahead and start discussing answers, how you got those answers. And don't just give up on your own answer because it doesn't match the, somebody else's. Both sides need to explain and convince each other who was right or who made a mistake. Did you plug into the objection function? Hmm? When the, uh, she only has time to decorate 10 boomerangs of either size, it doesn't give you the time, so wouldn't that just be irrelevant? No. When, would you add that? Would you use that equation like with the elimination? For part of the elimination, like x plus y equals 10? Possibly. Discuss with your group members. See what they think. What was your profit? How did you get a hundred? Because I plugged in zero and eight. Why did you plug in zero and eight? And check zero and eight again. See if you get a hundred. <laughs> see if you didn't make a little calculation error. I'm coming. Yeah, what'd you get? I get 80, unless I did my wrong, which I may have. So that means one of those other ones, that, the other points that you have there might be, uh, see if one of those is bigger than the 80. 6Y, well, and for you, it probably would be plugged right. We can use our calculators, right? It's not legal for us to use our calculators. No, you can use calculator. $10. Yes. Oh, we didn't get another difference. What? We didn't get another Oh, sorry. Should we get another graph? If you guys, do you want to use one of your graphs or would you change anything? I mean, I wouldn't change anything. What, do, what does your group think? Would the group change anything? Have you guys had a chance to even look at it? No, we already broke paper. <laughs> okay, so you can use this one then if you feel like this is, is the best. Messy, no, I don't think so. The only thing that I'd probably do is label what's your y-axis and what's your x-axis. So just be thorough and and everything. And you've labeled your lines. Write all of your names on here, and you'll put this. If you think this is going to add and help make the best answer, you can just add it to this. That way, you don't have to spend the time redoing it since you already did it. Josh, make sure you're involved with them, though. What? What do you want group answers? I want the best using everything that you guys. The function. You're answering the same. Mm -hmm. You're answering the same question. We have the answer. Okay. So, John, are you on the same page with these guys? Well, here's the thing, John. If you didn't finish it, okay, but stick with the group now. So don't worry about trying to finish your own because now we're doing the group work, okay? So, have you had a chance to look at theirs? Have you had a chance to look at theirs? Yeah. Okay. Do you agree with their work? Yeah. Okay. I didn't finish the graph. 
Do you need a graph? I'm, I'm asking just in general, do you need a graph? Um, do you guys agree on one graph as a group? You feel like one's good, and that it, then I don't want you to have to redo it because I don't want you to spend the time doing that. You can just attach that to the group paper. So basically, you just want us to write the, the, the four equations we had and then the objective function, and then that's really all else. The only thing that you don't know. No, that's not the only thing I want. I want, I want the best solution to the problem. So yes, you're going to incorporate all of the you're going to incorporate all those things, but I want to see the work for it. So I want to see the organization, the, the thought process. So would you combine this with that, or is one better than the other? I mean, hers obviously looks better than mine. I'm not going on looks. Is one more accurate than the other? They're the same answer. They're the same answer. Okay. In general, would we have one? Is which would be the best way as far as getting an accurate answer? A graph or your method? Oh, you graph too. Did you? Is that the only way you did it? Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay, I thought that I saw a different method there. Okay, so you guys both use the exact same method yeah. of graphing. Okay. Hers just looks better. Okay. John, is that, did you graph it or did you start with something else? Graphing is the only way I knew how to do this. Yeah, I didn't okay. I think we could do it any other way. What? Okay, well, let's, let's discuss that a little bit then. So, 6 4 is representing which point? The max, the yeah. maximum. Where on your graph is that point? Right there. So it is the maximum, but it's also a point what? Where they cross. What's the? The I. Two of the lines. Two of the lines. So we've learned that where two lines intersect is the what? Vertex. It's a vertex with these version, but it's a what? What have we been working with? A coordinate pair. <laughs> It's a solution to a, oh, a system. A, okay. There you go. It's a solution to a system of equations. In this case, a system of linear equations. So graphing is one way to do that. How else have we been doing that in class? How else have we been solving a system of equations? Elimination. Mm -hmm. So would that be another way to do it? I guess. I didn't see a way to do that. Okay. Well, you said that's the point where they cross, meaning these two lines. So could you do it algebraically now, do you think? Knowing. Knowing the two equations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So see if you get the same thing, just to justify your... Did you take this number and plug it into any of your constraints to check it? Uh huh. To make sure that it fit them. You did. You take the six and the four, right? Uh huh. I fit them. And do they work? See if you see if you can do it algebraically now. See if that's another option. Um, I don't really like get how you want to, like, I know I can do these two and I can find the point. Right. Do you want me to do like each of the points? Well. You said that this was the maximum, right. right? How many points is that? And it's created from which two lines intersecting? Yes. So if you find the solution to that system, see if it matches up with that point. Okay? And then see if that's going to fit your constraints. Yeah, it, yeah. Take about um, five-ish more minutes. John's showing all John, his work. You know what? Stop. You know what you're doing. I look at me. Okay. So, So, all right, so how did we how did we solve this? <coughs> what were the different? Okay, did everybody in the group graph it? Did you grab it? Okay. Okay. What did, what's the answer you guys got? Uh, six small and four large. Did you guys check to make sure it fit all of your constraints? Yes. And it did. You're sure? Did you check? I know. 
Taylor, do you check? For now, for the best for the best answer that you're coming up with, have you checked to make sure? That Blue. Like that's brown. green. I mean, that's like green. That's like yellow. Green. Oh yeah, you're right. It's like I thought green. either. All right, we'll just scribble so we can see both. Uh, yeah. Only green goes in there. So. Yeah, what is that? Right. Number one, two, and eight. Yeah. Or eight. So try to finish up within the next few minutes here. Hey, is it okay if my graph, like, that wasn't exactly mm -hmm. Did anybody come up with an exact, like, Malachi, what are you doing here? I had the rebound fixing it, so right now I have done the graph and I'll... I mean, I, I, got, the, I got the exact points, like, I used the limit. Oh, okay. I just not on my graph. It's not, it's not okay, exactly. so yeah. which is the more accurate way to do it, do you think? Which is the, yeah, yeah, to get the more accurate solution. Because I've yeah. fixed my graph like three times. And right. There's well, and, and there, there's a lot of room for error. This, though, this shouldn't be one. This is one. So what's your x-intercept on that? Uh, one through nine. Uh, one through nine. Just your x-intercept. Would be what? Uh, small if, if we have x plus y equals 10, or it's less than or equal to 10, what's your, what is y when you have a point on the x-axis? Always. The x-axis is the dependent, the dependent variable. So z y would have to be 0. If it's a point on the x-axis, y has to be 0, okay. right? Yeah. So if you plug in 0 for y, what does x equal? 0 for y is Zero. Yeah, ten. Using this, so you plug in zero here, x is 10, right? So that's your x intercept. Okay. For your y intercept, what does x have to be? For your y intercept, x would have to be zero. Yes, any point on the y axis, x is always zero. So you plug in zero for x, and y is what? Zero for x, and y is 10. Good, so you have 10 on the x axis, 10 on the y axis, you connect those. That is representing that line, and then the shading will take care of the inequality part. What I was saying was, like, I, got, I mean, I, I use elimination to get it, but like, see how it's like in the middle. Like, uh huh. Maybe that's, I'll just ask the yeah. Question. yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yep, because you've confirmed it. You've shown with this other way that that's where it is. So there's no guesstimation with the graph or anything. It could be, but think about this situation. We're talking about what is what is x represent? Right. We can't have part of a, part of a boomerang. Good. How are we doing? Um, we got like we got like the same answer, but then when we do like the profit thing, we're doing getting a different answer. So I'm doing the way he did it to see if I get the same thing. Get what I'm saying? So the way he did it is what you're saying. Yeah. What's the way he did it? How's it different? How's it different from what like you did? He has different x and y than us. Like our x <laughs> is his y, and his x is our y. Okay. So I'm trying to get his way to see if I get the same thing that he got. Okay. What do you think, Kyle? What did you get when you when you plugged in your vertices from your graph? I got 88 because I plugged in six and four. Okay. And that's what I got. And that's so you two got the same thing. Do you want to see my graph? No, I already saw it. You're good. I like it. Did six and four fit all of your constraints that you had come up with? Does it satisfy those constraints? Yes, it equals like the equal. Okay, good. I just realized that for one constraint. When you what? I just realized that what I did doesn't work for one constraint. Yeah, I think I just got that too. Okay, so where's the where's the mix up then? Because the common. Billy! Yeah, that's there. There are two things that are really Billy Morgan, did you just throw something? No, I was stupid. Are you talking the first one? The first one that they had? The X plus 2Y is less than 24. Which constraint did you get it wrong? Yeah, 3X. Yeah, that's what I just got wrong for you. 
Three X plus two Y, is that what you said? Yeah. What is X representing? X is large one, Y is small one. Okay. So your X intercept is eight and your Y intercept is twelve? I think so. Whoops. I got this. Quiet. Do you have Label your axes so you don't get confused. Good. That's what the group is supposed to do. Okay. Some groups are ready to move on. So what we're going to do, yes? Okay. So... You'll combine, so did you get the same thing? You got the exact same thing, so it kind of justifies the graph? Okay, so do you think combine that those are the best answer? The goal is just to create a, the best answer you can as a group. So as, as combine whatever is going to make it the best answer. So it's like you're taking the best parts of each person and putting them on that paper. Just use big okay, so what I'm going to do now, because you guys should be finishing up the group paper if you have not done so already. Shh. Stop, stop talking just for a minute really quick. Let me explain this and then you guys can get back to your groups. So if you're still working on the group, on the group answer, you can after I've explained what we're doing next. The next thing we're doing, each group is going to get four student responses to the exact same problem you did. So it's still the boomerang question that they are answering. But there are four different responses. Some might be wrong, some might be right. But what you're doing, you're answering the questions that are actually on this paper, okay? But you're also keeping things in mind, for example, if you were a teacher grading this work. However, make sure you have constructive criticism. You don't write anything down on the paper that you would um, not necessarily see on something that you would receive back. So just make sure they are appropriate comments and make sure it's constructive criticism. There's, you're not putting the student down no matter what you might be thinking at the time. Just if it's not on something that you would get back, don't write it because I know sometimes you guys can be sarcastic with it, which haha, -ha, but not, don't do that on here. So questions to keep in mind in addition to the questions that you're answering here, as you look at the work, what do you like about it? Are there good things or are there bad things? Um, is the work organized? If it is, great, but if it's not, what questions do you have for the student or what could they have done better? Um, and then could they have improved their work at all? So just kind of basic, what could they have done better, what could they have done differently, what do you like, what don't you like? But try to see if you can figure out their thought process. So it's kind of the same idea as when I come around and say, okay, hey, where did that inequality come from? What does that number represent? Something like that. Those are the same types of things that, are, that I want to be going through your head. Each group member, so for example, when I give this group this packet, all three of them are going to be looking at the first one. So it's um, Alex's response to this exact same question you guys have been working on. See what mistakes, if there are any, anything that you guys feel would be necessary to answer these questions, but I want each person to have an input and then you guys answer it together, and then you move on to the next one together. Make sense? Are there any questions? No. So pretty much, you're going to have the rest of the period to work on this, OK? But each group gets one. You're going to be turning in everything today, so don't put anything up. Um, when you get this, make sure each group member's name is on it. That's fine, you can do that. Do you think it enhances the answer? Do you I mean, think it makes you know that it's more correct? Okay. So yes, it makes it a better, more complete solution, I guess we could say. It's the same solution, but it's more complete. And that way, if somebody would pick up that paper, it gives them two opportunities to figure out how you came up with that answer. Uh, 
That wasn't a kid's toy. Okay, well, you can still go back to that, though. That's not a kid's toy. small deposit cup on that. not right. Five small, five large. The ride do it? I never want No, 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 no. What did you put, John? We put six small, four large. That'd be 50 and 45. Yeah, that'd be 50 and 40. How can you justify that it would go over one of the constraints? Which one? You have, you have both of your constraints here. Five and five, which one would it go over? Or which one would it not satisfy? Does it hit? Okay. It doesn't hit. Okay. Yeah, that goes out of one of the constraints. No, it doesn't. Which one? It does on my graph. Five oh, and five. And plus All right. There you go. There you go. So do we have to change it? You got it right. Why would you change it? You're bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 What do you mean two possible options? Two possible options of what? What are you? Be more specific with that is what I'm saying. And what is what does the rest of the group think? Have you guys had an opportunity to discuss it? Same exact question. Yes. All right. Well, we don't know how many. And keep keep those questions in mind as you're going through it, as well as what they're asking you on that paper. Is that is that what, is that right? Like assumptions are just like what they what they said, what their answer was. What did they? What did they assume was? Yes. What did they assume was the correct answer? Or what did they What did they assume without necessarily taking everything into consideration? That they could only make one type of boomerang. Okay. So that's all we had to write. That's yeah. That's one thing. If you if you want to add anything else into that, you can. No, don't. You don't have to. It doesn't mean erase what you have. It doesn't mean what you have is wrong. Yeah. Why well, said that he said they they could either make ten small remains or eight large remains make eighty dollars? Yeah. Where's that wrong? Okay. So yeah, which in addition to what Josh said as well, that was the assumption that hey, they can only make one type of boomerang. Okay. Well, which says they can only make one type of boomerang? And then also, have you guys considered those 12 small? Yeah, but the Alex and Phil can only make 12 small and 8 large boomerangs in 24 hours. So, that, so they could either make 10 small, which makes $8 for 8 large, which makes 8 large. OK. What about? Because they don't have enough time. For what? To make 12. Good. So include that in, in your answer. OK. Kyle. You're having fun. This is exciting. What? I bet. You see all these answers right here? I made them up. All of them? All of them. It is right. I don't impossible. He also assumes that they. Okay, he does assume. What do you guys think? What do you mean, what do we think? Like I'm asking, because you're asking me, so I'm turning it back to you guys. What do you, do you think that is the correct answer? Do you think that we could add anything to it? I know, that's what I'm trying to figure that's out. That's the assumption he made. That's what we think his assumption is. When we <laughs> See, you just reverse it on us, and we just reverse it back on Austin, what do you think? <laughs> I think that's about it. OK, so you think that he assumed that making $96 is impossible. Where on here tells you why is $96 impossible? Why did, is that an assumption, or is that a fact? Well, I guess that is a fact. That. Why is it a fact? Because it says you only have time to make 10 and that's 12. So okay. So, can I just like cross it out? Yeah. yeah. Where does that, why does he only have time to make 10 though? Where does that come from? That comes from the problem. Because Kath only had time to decorate 10. Yeah. Correct? Okay. Okay. Good. So they can only make smaller. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. You're on the right track.
Is this what you want to Is that all you need? Perfect. You're good. So keep that together with that other paper. So what have we got here? I we made a combination of six. OK. So because he assumed that only one type could be made, he forgot to include possible other possible combinations, which you have written there. Good. Are there anything, any general comments, anything you like? Don't like. Is there anything that he could have done to? Could have actually tried to work after problem. Okay. He. Yeah. Instead of just looking at it, saying, "Okay, well, he can do this or this," he didn't look at the other possible options. Good. The work is fine. He didn't. He didn't explore everything. He didn't. What do you call that word? This kid is weird. <laughs> See, that's the comment I'm saying, like, don't write that down. It may be a thought, but don't write it down. I know, but my first period did. I don't understand how you, like, get to want to do this now. Yeah, why did Danny start at E and stop it? I don't know. I'm trying to see a reason. I'd probably call him up and tell him to explain it to me. But he started with 8 and 0. Actually, all of these add up to 9. None of these add up to 10. Which piece of information has Danny forgotten to use? Uh, I forgot to factor in the number of hours. Hard. Good. Good, good, good. You guys are on the right track with that one. Some people get stumped on that one. And, and could he think, could he add anything to the table to help? him to remember the constraint of, hey, we can decorate 10. <coughs> well, if, if you would have put a, he needs a side note of make sure these add up to 10 or something. OK. And something like you guys were adding with the, with the number of hours as well. OK. Good, good, good. Which one are we on here? Um, Billy, Shh, not your group. Have you guys looked at this one, Danny's? Or is it just Taylor? No, the whole group is looking at Okay, so what do you guys? He forgot to use a graph, okay. It's organized, but he hasn't like stated anything. He doesn't show what offer, how he's getting his numbers. Do those, do the combinations need to come up with work though? How could you figure out if they work? Does he have the combination you guys came up with? Does he have the same combination of small and large boomerangs that you came up with? Billy, your group only. Amir, your group only. So, Cole. He's not taking a look at all the options. He's taking a look at some. No, he's taking a look at too many options. Are they all possible combinations, though? How many, how many, dec how many um, boomerangs could be decorated? Ten. Look at the combinations of small and large. How does that compare to, hey, I can decorate 10. What do you notice? What? None of them add up to the OK, so did he go to that limit? OK, so he stayed under 10. What about the time? How's the time doing? Are you guys serious right now? I am not serious. <laughs> Uh, 
So you want him to show some work then? Yeah, he needs to show more work. Okay, he needs to show more work. He needs to show his thought process. Yes. What are some questions you would ask him? Uh, Why did you choose to do it like this? Okay. What is the company? Why do you think he decided to stop at the combination of four and five? <laughs> because of all of these, you got looked at the highest. And then what started happening once once he hit 82, what started happening? So he's probably thinking, hey, it's as high as I'm going to get. But going back to what Ryan had said, we haven't exactly. He didn't explore all the options. He didn't consider the constraint where they could make 10. And do they all fit? I didn't hear your answer to the time constraint because I was distracted by somebody else. Did they fit the time constraint? Uh, we did. Uh, he did. So that's maybe that's something he could add to his table then to help to help the organization process. And so he doesn't lose track of those constraints. This announcement is for all of the juniors and seniors that signed up for the ASVAB test. This test is tomorrow. You need to remember to bring a calculator to school tomorrow and some number two pencils. The test will be starting very early in the morning. You will go yeah. first period for attendance, and then I will call you okay. to the auditorium. Those of you that are in the academy and you need to bring your calculator, you need to bring your calculator. What do you need to bring your calculator? 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 When it is time for students to go to the organized, okay. Has he labeled things? Okay. Thank you. When you look at the combinations of boomerangs he's made, small and large, what is he considered with the number of small and the number of large boomerangs? Say it again. Profit. He's considered the profit. That's one thing. What else is he considered? The cost of what. How much that, yeah, the cost of how much it is for one boomerang for small. Okay, so still so, so the profit. But how many does he make here? Zero. How many does he make here? Eight. How many does he make here? One, seven, two, six, three, five, four. So what's he, where are those numbers coming from? Why are those possible values he's picked? He's just going Because they, the they said that they could only make eight large boomerangs. But then they say 12 small Think about the the answer you guys came up as a group. What were the what were the limitations on there? Because you you just took that from this other response from the other student with the twelve, yeah. and they said twelve small didn't work because they only had the time to make ten. So why were these possible combinations? Did they have enough time to make those? You tell me. How do you know if they had enough time to make those? Where are your constraints that you guys came up with? Market my constraints? Yeah, that's uh, 24 hours. Then they all out of 24? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's one constraint. What constraint are you guys considering right now? Well, you just got. You guys were just referring to what, though? What unit did you just use? Hours. Hours. So you guys were the time constraint, right? Is that the only constraint we had? Is that the only limitation we had? No. What was the other limitation? Money and time. No, just time. Not just time. The amount they can make. Yeah. Hours. One. How many could they make maximum? Maximum. How many? Could, how many? How many could they make maximum? Like what's the ten. correct answer? Ten. Ten. Together. Oh, okay. She has time to decorate ten. Has he looked at? Hey, if I decorate ten. No. What's he looked at? Just he's only looked at the time. Or he, only, he, he didn't do the most. He, he only worked at. The, he only looked at the time. None of these. All these are under ten. Good. So he just took the time constraint into consideration. He didn't take the number he could make into consideration or the number that could be decorated into consideration. So he kind of lost track of 
his constraints. It's kind of all over the place. So he started off kind of organized and focused, and then, uh, and it's it's hard for you guys to see because because of that. So keep that in mind, especially like when you guys are doing your work. Is this going to look like something Danny would turn in, or can I improve this? And that's kind of what the mm -hmm. and that's kind of the goal of what you guys were doing with individual to group work. Yeah, have I made it the best possible answer I can, and it's easy and clear to understand? What was your question? Daniel. It's Daniel. Daniel. I'm just kidding. It's really not Daniel. No, it's really not Daniel. That'd be awkward if, you if this was you. <laughs> I know. That's my work. I didn't want to say anything. No, they just Okay. So, finish up the part you're working on, because we only have about four more minutes left. Tomorrow, you guys are going to get this back. We're going to finish up the activity tomorrow, okay? But what I need right now, I need everything from you guys. So if at each table you guys could make a um, pile for the pre-assessment, so the one you did individually, another pile that you came up with your best answer as a group, and then a third pile, hang on, a third pile of the um, packet of student responses. What if I did, what if I used mine? If one of you guys used like a graph or a piece from somebody's um, paper for the group, just attach it to the paper, to the group paper, and that'll be fine. Amir, I need to see you. After class, I need to see you three after class. <laughs> and if you want to keep laughing, I can see you too. And then just leave the desks how they are. Pretty quick. Like, Tyler Bowers, please report to the main office.